I remember someone saying, yeah, our work from home plan is until the fall. And I was like, what? And then that's when I was like, oh no. Hi, I'm Nina. And I'm Chris. And we are engaged. Oh yeah? <laughs> We've been together for a little over five years. We met via Tinder. I swiped right. As did I. Within like a week, we went on our first date. Then it was kind of history from there, wasn't it? A little over a year ago, we got engaged. I got a lot of her friends to come meet two of my friends and I at brunch. And I had popped the question basically in front of everybody. She resents me a little bit for it because I decided to put a really bad pun in it. Fiance, yes. <laughs> Pretty good, no. right? I mean. <laughs> so we were supposed to get married on June 27th in Chicago at a hotel, like 275, 300 people. I have like a really big family and there's like a really big Sri Lankan community and, and you have family too. <laughs> My side would not be nearly as represented as, as hers. I was really inspired by Nikki's show called Wedding Season, which was like, it's about her getting ready for her wedding. So me and my friend Annie, who also works at BuzzFeed, decided to produce another season of Wedding Season, all centered around me planning my wedding. As we started production, there was a lot happening. I have my full-time job still to do, and then I was also doing a writing fellow planning the actual wedding, as well as doing all the things that I had to do for wedding season. One of the videos we were doing is a diet and fitness video, so I had to start like working out a bunch and like meal planning. Things were in full swing and it was getting very stressful. <laughs> As we were kind of in the middle of production and shooting all these episodes, the pandemic started really affecting our lives. There were some kind of red flags happening that made us worry about the state of our wedding. I think the first for me anyways, was that we got an email at work basically saying that we were gonna have to work from home, extended, you know, for a month and then they would keep pushing back the deadline. And it was just like, it felt like, okay, I don't know when I'm going back into work. I'm the Dean of a small, Pop Music College, the end of our winter quarter was mid-March, which is basically right when you know what hits the fan. On the last day of school, the night before, and I had to contact all the students, all the faculty, say, okay, last day of school is canceled. And that's kind of when I got a feeling, you know, this was gonna be pretty bad and pretty serious. It was a very strange kind of waiting game with determining whether or not to postpone the wedding because I think when my cousin's wedding got canceled, theirs is canceled, but ours is three months away and everything will be fine in three months. <laughs> we can totally gather 300 people in an enclosed space in three months. But like at the time that it seemed fine. And I remember someone saying, our work from home plan is until the fall. And I was like, what? And that's when I was like, oh no, like things are gonna have to shift significantly. The decision to postpone things came kind of incrementally. I wouldn't say there was one moment. We were supposed to fly back to Chicago to have a bridal shower, cake tasting, flower selection, all in the last weekend of March. I think a week before or something, we were like, yeah, we can't do this. Our wedding planner sent us a bunch of dates from like August to December of what was still available at our hotel. But we couldn't select any of those dates unless we gave up our June 27th date and I was like well we can't like what if it's what if everything's okay there was a moment where I think I was just like okay what do we have in 2021 and that that was like a big moment I think they let us know that June 26th was available just take a sharpie to all the uh, invitations and everything just you know change the zero to a one you know it's, it's easy once we realized all the vendors were available and our venue was accommodating us after strong arming them a bit you know a little bit your mother uh, bossed up you know, let them know what's up for our vendors, because we're having our wedding in a hotel, the food is coming from the hotel. So we didn't have to do anything on that front. Food and alcohol was taken care of. With some of our vendors, we had pitched other dates to them where they weren't available. If they weren't available, they kept the deposits. We were incentivized to find a date where everyone was still available in order to not lose those deposits. Then we kind of had to reassess our contracts. Our DJ company was pretty chill. Like right when this all started, they were like, if it's within a year of your original date, we'll just move it, no charge, no problem for some of our other vendors. For example, our photographer, she was not available for our new wedding date. So we're using a different photographer from that studio and that came with a cost change. Some wedding vendors just 
increased prices as years go on for cost of living and just like inflation and all that stuff. In the grand scheme of things with our vendors, we're pretty lucky because I heard about some people just getting completely screwed and like not getting any deposits back and that really sucks. In short, only a small cluster. We kind of had a lot of details still up in the air when the pandemic hit. And in that way, we were kind of protected. Like a registry and stuff like this. We didn't have anything like that set up yet. Not having to think about all of this stuff all at the same time has been nice. I think I was getting close to a point of maybe a light breakdown <laughs> in terms of the amount of work I had to do. It was gonna be a pretty stressful few weeks, potentially a couple months. And so kind of taking all of that off my plate, I will say was not the worst thing necessarily. <laughs> I think I had just made our wedding website which is still up. I guess I should change the date. Hopefully nobody shows up in Chicago. <laughs> Save the date again. <laughs> but, I mean, I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, might as well. I think it'll be cute. A lot of the health experts were basically saying that there might be a sort of second wave of coronavirus when the weather cools down. And so we thought it prudent to basically postpone until summertime of next year. For us, I think we shifted our date relatively early. It was still over a year out, so there were still dates available. I think now is the time when it's getting to be really difficult for people. We still definitely held on to our original date for quite a while, but I think we made the decision earlier than most people to push it really far, and that helped us in the end. We had always planned to like get our marriage license from the courthouse as people do in Chicago. I had always planned for that still to be like a cute thing that we did where we like got dressed up and maybe took some photos. Another reason <laughs> to do a photo shoot. Our real wedding got pushed. Like I, I still want to get married. Yeah, I mean, we kind of had our hearts set on 2020. And so we really wanted to kind of honor that commitment to each other uh, formally, even though we couldn't really do the hoopla shenanigans begins in June of this year. We still wanted to sort of sign the papers and, you know, make it official. We were kind of hoping that we could maybe have our courthouse wedding close to our original date, but one of the things we want is for our parents to be there. It's not super safe for our parents to travel right now. And then also the courts have not reopened yet, so we're kind of just playing it by ear in terms of when those two things will align so we can do it. But I do have hope that that will happen in 20 2020. It's been a little bit difficult emotionally in the sense of like, you know, we've basically postponed two versions of a wedding and even filming this wedding season stuff. Like this shouldn't be one of the videos. This last episode is supposed to be a wedding and we have nothing to deliver you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> June 27th, 2020 is still a date that we want to be special to us. And I think we still want to do fun stuff on that day. We're going to find our own little ways to celebrate. Like, I want to get dressed up. Yeah, you know, we crack open a bottle or something. It's not ideal that we've had to postpone all of this stuff, but we are very lucky that we have our health and we have each other. And we get to take more photo shoots. Okay. <laughs> and the wedding is just a symbol of what we've been cultivating for over five years now. And, you know, of course, we want everybody to take part in it. We want everybody to kind of celebrate this union with us. You get married because you love the person and you are in a strong relationship with them and the certificate should not be a thing that really changes stuff between the two people. I think whether we get the piece of paper this summer, next summer, whenever it happens, our relationship will just continue to be something that's strong and fun and that I like having in my life. This is a great segue for a smooch. Okay. <laughs> so we, hello, hey. <laughs> we are on our way to pick up some food from a very fancy Italian restaurant to kind of celebrate our original wedding date called Rosso Blue. We're gonna have a little night in and it's gonna be very cute and very special, right? And there's gonna be tequila shots. And there's gonna be tequila shots. <laughs> Thank you so much for following along and watching us as we went on this little journey. See you next year when we have our actual wedding. When we can leave the house. Yeah, that'll be a great time. 